Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is Next.js Top 100 Interview Questions and Answers. This series covers everything from basic to advanced concepts including the code snippets. This is part 1 of the series. We will cover top 20 questions in this episode and we will remaining cover in the other parts. Let's get started. Alright, the first and the foremost question is what is Next.js? Next.js is a React framework that provides infrastructure and simple development experience for server rendered applications. It extends the capabilities of React by providing features like static and server side rendering, file based routing, API routes and much more. The key differences being that server side rendering. Next.js has built in support for SSR while React does not. Static site generation. Next.js can generate a static HTML at build time itself. File based routing. Next.js uses the file system to create routes automatically. API routes. Next.js allows creating backend API endpoints within the same application. So these are some of the key highlights you will mention when you talk about what is Next.js. The next obvious question that comes is, how does routing work in Next.js? So Next.js uses file based routing system, which means each page in a Next.js app is a React component in the pages directory. So whenever you want to create a new route, you will place them under the pages folder with the same file name. The file structure determines the routes of the application. How can you fetch data in Next.js? Next.js provides several methods for fetching data, including get static props, get server side props, and get static paths. Get static props can be used for static site generation, get server side props can be used for server side rendering, and get static paths is used for dynamic routing. Take an example here. We are using get static props. In this, we are making a fetch call getting the data and returning it as a props. This is one of the example. Same way we can use get server side props and get static paths as well. What are dynam dynamic routes in Next.js and how do you implement them? Dynamic routes allows us to create routes with dynamic parameters. You can implement dynamic routes by creating a file with square brackets in the pages directory just like this. Now this means inside the pages you are creating a post and is expecting an id.js when it when you actually launch it you will launch it like slash post slash id which can be a number string anything that's the unique identifier to identify that unique route and while capturing it you will use the use router to get the dot query and get extract that particular id how do you cre create API routes in Next.js? API routes provide a solution to build your API with Next.js. You can create an API endpoint by creating a file under the pages slash API directory. So here, if you have an API which says slash hello.js, you can create a handler and say that this you will export that function with a request and response and send the response accordingly. So in short, you will uh, just like how you create the routes under pages, same way you will create API routes inside API folder. Explain the use of next slash link and next slash router. Next slash link is used for client side navigation between routes in Next.js. It's basically a tag that is provided in Next.js and you will use it like this link href about like that. So it's basically a HTML tag which is available, which is a link. Whereas next slash router provides methods to navigate programmatically and access the router object. Okay, so remember the difference between link and next uh, slash router. <coughs> How do you use CSS in Next.js? Next.js supports various ways to style applications, including CSS modules, global CSS and styled components. Take a look here. If you have a CSS file 
which has a class called title you can import it import the styles from style slash home slash module dot CSS and in the component you can assign directly like styles dot title so it will directly map the class name by the name title what is get initial props and how does it differ from get server side props and get static props earlier I showed you an example of get static props get initial props is an older method to fetch initial data both on the server and client side but now it's recommended to use either get server side props or get static props for either server side rendering or directly to generate the static pages so in short get server side props will only run on the server side and fetch data on each request whereas get static props fetches data at build time and generates the static pages how do you optimize images in Next.js? Next.js provides the next slash image component for image optimization which includes automatic resizing optimization and serving from a content delivery network just like how we saw next slash link same way we have next slash image what it does is that it will build an image tag and it you can pass the attributes like source alt width height whatever we pass in the HTML for image tag explain the use of middleware in Next.js middleware in Next.js allows us to run code before a request is completed it can be used for tasks like authentication, logging, interception, network head setting headers, etc. So this is just like if you are coming from Express.js, you would know that any middleware would just do a method where it takes the request environment. Then again, you do dot next. That means after that, it would be passed the same information, whether it's the header or the content, you can easily map it using middleware. What is incremental static regeneration in Next.js? Incremental static regeneration allows us to update static content after the initial build without re-rendering the entire site. You can specify a revalidation interval to update the content. So take a look here. We are using get static props, which is making a fetch call, getting the data and sending it back as props. However, we have added revalidate 10. That means after every 10 seconds check for data content update or not this process is called incremental static regeneration how does next.js handle internationalization next.js has a built-in support for internationalized routing and locale detection so you can work with any different locales or language setups and you can also configure the default locale in your next.config.js so you can create a config file where you have this and you can write I18N which stands for internationalization and you can mention the locales that you're working with. Locales are nothing but the different languages that your application will support and work with. In this example, you can see locales is defined as EN, France and Dutch. Default language is to English. How can you add custom headers in Next.js? You can configure custom headers in the Next.js file using the headers function. So in the module.exports, you will define the headers function. In that, you will return back the source, headers, whatever we want to set the custom keys. What is the purpose of underscore app.js and underscore document.js in Next.js? Underscore app.js customizes the default app component. It can be used to persist layouts, initialize state, or add global styles. Underscore document.js customizes the HTML document structure itself. It can be used to modify the HTML and body tags and add meta global tags or link tags. How do you handle environment variables in Next.js? Next.js supports environment variables using .env files. You can define different variables in your local .env.local, dev, or production, and according to based on the environments that you have set up. This is just if you have used anywhere .env, 
this is exactly same of how you would do in Next.js as well. You define the variables in the env files like this next public api url and you will give the value while accessing in the components or routes you would just use it with directly like process dot env dot variable name that's how you can use any variable name in next.js how can you create a custom server in next.js you can create a custom server in Next.js using Node.js or any other framework like Express. This allows more control over the server side logic and middleware. Here we are using the Express.js. So you can just do a server app.prepare and then server.get and then server.listen is the one to start the server. Here you are running the application server on port number 3000 which is by default of Express. So you can use any other frameworks other than Express also if you want to start your own custom server. How do you use SWR for data fetching in Next.js? SWR is a React Hooks library for data fetching. It provides features like caching, revalidation and error handling. So you would do import use SWR from SWR and then you would write the fetch and in the component, you can use that particular return data by using the use SWR hook. So remember, <coughs> use SWR is a custom hook that you can use for data fetching, caching, revalidation, and error handling. How do you handle redirects in Next.js? You can handle redirects in Next.js using the redirects function in the next.config.js file. In your next.config.js, you can add a async method redirects and write the source and destination along with the source old path. So here, whenever the user comes to slash old hyphen route, he'll be redirected to new hyphen route. Is this permanent change? It is true. So it will always reroute old hyphen route to new hyphen route. How can you use TypeScript in with Next.js? TypeScript has built-in TypeScript support. Similarly, just like how you have JavaScript, you can also start using TypeScript by creating a tsconfig.json file in the root directory. Remember, the file names will now change from JS to TSX. TSX because it needs to have the J like a JSX format, which means it will have the HTML returned inside it and hence it has to be TSX. You can also enable that in tsconfig.json and include the details like JSX preserve and also important thing that you will enable is include environment dev.ts, .ts or TSX. The last question on this part, what is the use of next slash head? Earlier we have seen next slash link next slash image same way next slash head is to modify the head tag of your document it allows us to add metadata links and scripts to the head of your pages so just like how you have the image tag or the link tag you have the head tag where you can inject title description meta tag og tags etc all right, so thank you so much for joining in this part one of the series. This will be a five part series. We'll continue with part two next time. Make sure that you like, share and subscribe to the videos. If you like my work and tutorials, please do consider buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash tutorials. I hope you're enjoying this series. I hope you're learning. Keep learning, keep growing. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.